A chunk of rock from a different star system is heading straight toward Earth at a speed a thousand times faster than a Formula One car. And I'm not talking about some sci-fi movie plot here. Recent research shows that our sweet little Earth could be more exposed to galactic intruders than we believe. These are called interstellar objects, or ISOs for short. And there is a certain part of Earth that has higher odds of getting hit. And we'll get back to it in a minute. But first, let's see what these ISOs are all about. We've only spotted a few so far, like one eye Amoamoa back in 2017, two eye Borisov in 2019, and this year, three eye Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor, passed through our solar system. Interstellar objects like three eye Atlas and Amoamoa aren't gravitationally bound to the Sun or any star in our solar system. That's why they're super fast and drift freely through the galaxy until they, by chance, cross our path. But what if one of those does more than just pass by and actually hits us? Scientists ran giant computer simulations with billions of fake interstellar objects flying around, then narrowed them down to the ones that could hit Earth. It turned out that these objects wouldn't hit the planet randomly. Low-latitude zones near the equator are more likely to get smacked. Places just above or below the tropics carry the biggest risk. And before you sigh with relief because you don't live there, there's also a bit more risk for the northern hemisphere, where almost 90% of the human population resides. It's likely to happen in a pattern and not as a random lottery because ISOs are not typical orbiters like asteroids or comets tied to the sun. They come flying in on hyperbolic trajectories. That's a fancy way of saying they're unbound, just passing through. That means their arrival direction, speed, and relative motion all matter. The simulations show many ISOs are coming roughly from the direction the Sun moves in the galaxy, or along the Milky Way's main disk, called the galactic plane. Looks like the risk of impact also changes from season to season. The fastest potential strikes lean toward spring, when Earth is moving toward the solar apex. But overall, even calmer, slower ISO impacts are slightly more likely to happen in winter, when Earth faces away from that motion. It doesn't mean you should panic. These events are extremely rare, but it changes what we imagined. Astronomical visitor from the stars is no longer just a fantasy. It's a real risk, with a map. And this isn't just theoretical. Earth already gets hit by objects from inside our solar system all the time. Space rocks, comets, asteroids, they cross our orbit. That's why scientists keep an eye on near-Earth objects. Asteroids and comets that come within 30 million miles of Earth's orbit get that title and make it to the NEO list. To track them, scientists use a whole network of telescopes on mountains, in deserts, and even in space. NASA's PANSTARS in Hawaii scans the sky every night like a giant radar, takes picture after picture, and compares them. If something moves slightly between the images, that's a potential asteroid. The Catalina Sky Survey in Arizona does the same thing, and it found more than half of all near-Earth asteroids we know today. There's also NEOWISE, a space telescope that can spot dark, cold asteroids that ground-based telescopes might miss. And then there's DART, NASA's first real test of asteroid deflection. In 2022, NASA actually hit an asteroid on purpose to slightly change its orbit. The asteroid wasn't dangerous, but the test worked. And that single mission proved humanity can literally change the path of a space rock if we ever need to. And if all of this wasn't cool enough, NASA is building a new superhero to protect the Earth, NEO Surveyor. It will be the first telescope ever built specifically to detect huge numbers of asteroids and comets that could be dangerous to Earth. Here's why this thing matters so much. The solar system is crowded, messy, and full of objects we can't see with normal telescopes. A lot of asteroids are dark, like charcoal dark, and they barely reflect sunlight. That means regular optical telescopes look right past them. But even the blackest asteroid starts to warm up when the sun hits it, and warm things glow in infrared. That's where NEO Surveyor flexes. Its ultra-sensitive infrared detectors don't care how dark an asteroid is. 
if it's heated by sunlight, the spacecraft will spot it like a space detective with thermal vision. And the best part is that NEO Surveyor will finally see the asteroids that come at us from the direction of the Sun. Ground-based telescopes can't stare at the Sun unless they want to go blind. So anything approaching from that direction is basically sneaking up behind Earth wearing cosmic camouflage. NEO Surveyor fixes that. It will also catch the sneaky objects that travel ahead of Earth or behind us in our orbit. The ones that are drowned out by sunlight and slip through the cracks. These are real threats, and bigger telescopes on the ground often miss them. But when they don't miss a new object, they track it for days or weeks to figure out its orbit, basically its path around the Sun. They need to know if it's going to cross Earth's orbit, if it will come close, and if so, how close. If it doesn't look harmless, it will go on to the Sentry Risk Table, which is basically Earth's cosmic watch list. So, stuff hits our atmosphere all the time. Tiny meteoroids, something like cosmic crumbs, burn up and give us shooting stars. Sometimes a slightly bigger rock shows off and creates a bright fireball. It happened over northern France a couple of years ago. Astronomers spotted a small asteroid hours before it arrived and people on the ground got a surprise fireworks show courtesy of outer space. But every now and then, a rock comes in that's not quite big enough to survive the descent, but still large enough to release a terrifying amount of energy when it breaks apart. One example of those was the Chelyabinsk meteor. On February 15, 2013, the locals were just starting their day when the sky suddenly lit up. When it blew up about 14 miles above the ground, it released the energy of 440,000 tons of TNT. Then, a space rock, only the size of a house, slammed into Earth's atmosphere at 11 miles per second. And for a moment, it looked like a sci-fi movie had come to life. The shockwave shattered windows across almost 200 square miles, damaged thousands of buildings, and injured more than 1,600 people, mostly from flying glass. And because it came from the direction of the Sun, no telescope ever saw it coming. The crazy part is that it wasn't even close to the kind of destruction a bigger asteroid could do. NASA's planetary defense experts still talk about this meteor like it was both a warning shot and a wake-up call. After this episode, NASA and international partners launched the International Asteroid Warning Network and the Planetary Defense Coordination Office the folks whose job it is to make sure Earth doesn't get surprised smacked again. NASA is planning rapid response missions to study any asteroid that looks suspicious, and they might even send a spacecraft to check out an asteroid making a super-close pass in 2029. Think of it as our planet doing regular health checkups against space hazards. The odds for any person, anywhere, to be hit by an interstellar rock in their lifetime are still minuscule. But what used to seem like science fiction, rocks crossing between stars randomly hitting us, now looks like science fact, or at least science possibility. So the more we understand how asteroids respond to impacts, the better our chances of saving Earth one day. Because you can't protect humans from a dangerous asteroid if you don't know it exists. The equipment that's getting more and more advanced gives us the advantage of time. And in a cosmic emergency, time is everything. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.